I'm halfway through the preparation of this video and thought I'd start back and give you a little bit of the challenges that I'm facing. In the last video, we installed the upper clamp and the preparation of the upper beams. Um, so now it seemed to be a simple process. Let's install the breast hook which I had done on the lower frame and really felt it would be pretty easy to do. Um, and then there's this little statement, uh, having done that, don't stick anything, make sure you go through the processes. So the foremast partner, which was challenging in the first round, but <laughs> turned out to be really a, an extreme challenge this time around. And then as soon as I get that finished and I feel well, I'm okay now, then the bowsprit um, step has to be put in first, uh, which means that I have to locate the forecastle deck clamp 25 above that so that I can locate the beam above it. Um, and then I said, okay, well, that's, that's pretty good. And then all of a sudden I realized I have for the first time to do some carved pillars, which I'd never done, um, shouldn't be a problem. So I whip out my old duplicator, which um, I must have bought, oh, 10, 15 years ago, more probably 15 years ago. And the truth is I've never used it. So we're gonna leave that for a later video. Um, so let's get right into it. Contrary to my statements in the last video, where I said I would start the stern, um, I've decided to follow the instructions and start chapter 8 um, by going to the bow. Again, having had the experience of doing the lower deck frames, I'm much more confident in doing the upper deck frames. And so the first thing I did was I made up a mahogany piece um, using a damaged frame and made all of the pieces and in fact got them to fit beautifully in in the model. I'm not a hundred percent sure on the um, pronunciation but this is the e um, this is the deck hook and this is the first upper beam. As you can see my piece didn't come out as perfect as this one. Um, I used some mahogany, which is nice soft wood and easy to manipulate. And I made all of the parts. And this was a, a damaged frame that wasn't so perfect. Um, so it was really ideal. Uh, if you go to the 3D version, as you see up on the top right hand corner, you'll see that this little piece here wasn't shown in the, in the book diagram. Some of these little secrets are discovered in the 3D um, drawings. It makes a huge difference having that 3D reference to go to. Um, if I had made this out of hardwood and had done all the work and then found out that I had to add the piece, I would be really quite annoyed with myself. And then this is the final piece um, with the beam. Um, you see it's much better made and again making the easy piece of the mahogany helped me make a proper piece on the um, using the hardwood. We also had to, I didn't make a perfect job of the bottom as you know we had to recess in um, to, to pick up strike 21 and this recess probably could have been a little smaller um, I could make this over, I'm not going to. Next time around, I'll be a little tighter on it. Um, I actually made this up, I didn't use the, the milling machine, I should have, I just used a drill press um, to get a nice clean one inch step down. Um, next time I'll use the, the milling machine. So here is the sacrificial piece and it's nice and tight and everything fits really great and here is the final piece and frame number one fits in there perfectly
huge improvement in my workmanship. So we're going to set up the center point on beam number two and to establish that um, first of all we put it in place using the caliper and I've actually marked it out so I don't have to keep repositioning it. And what we want to do is make sure that the center point on the beam is not established by a protractor but it's actually established by the rail center and so I've, I'm lining it up and, and here is the center line the straight edge which we're lining up with the stern post the mark on the stenson and there is the mark why that mark is important is that what we did last time is we just found the center line of the beam. So here we have taken a, a measurement off one side and look at the difference. But had I used my old method, I would be in big trouble. I'm not sure if you can see that, but this is the source of the error. There's the three inches. some reason I follow the dotted line and here it's gone back so the error was caused by shifting away from the line on the building board for some reason so I'm going to mark it So when I'm sanding to get that down. Now I'm installing the Collins and I'm paying special attention to make sure I have nice clean sweeping lines, not so caught up with the exact position of where the Collin fits, but that I have a good visual line. Um, so the workmanship is more important than taking an exact measurement off the plan. Now we can stick the breast hook assembly in place. I made an addition to the bench. It was just a matter of time before I figured out how and where I was going to do it. And that is my, um, my hanging drill bit. Um, of course, building a model without one of these attached to the workbench, um, you're missing half your life. And I set it up in such a way that I can move it to the front or the back of the bench, depending on where I'm working on the model. And of course these fit straight in the dog holes, so it really is, again, perfect use of dog hole and finding another use for it uh, other than holding a piece on the, on the workbench. Now we are out in the outside workshop making up some bug stock. The two carlins that fit under the foremast partner um, at the front um, is 8 inches wide and really 10 inches deep. We had a lot of, um, it's a strange size piece. And for the foremast partner itself, those blocks, and that was a rather large piece. The foremast partners were a real struggle to understand from the book. And again, the clarity that the 3D provides in understanding the piece is incredible. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what was meant in the book. 
and these are the two pieces that I made up based on my understanding and these are the two pieces that are actually what is required, what needs to be made. In a real sense you actually need both. Um, simply going to the, the 3D as shown here in the corner really lets you understand the piece um, but you still need to come back to the dimensions that are shown in the book um, which is here and from that you put your various lines and, um, and make up the, the pieces. Now we take um, beams 2 and 3 and cut the recesses to take the carlins again just need to be careful and do it accurately. In book 3 um, Greg shows that he has made up the corner chocks um, separate from the cross chocks and pin them in. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to do that. I'm going to cheat and use my chisels to mark the spots out and I'm going to be very happy with that. This is really just too hard for no benefit. So we'll use the chisels and carve out the spots for the carlins and eventually for the ledges. Um, and then once that's all done and fitted, we can move on to making up the bowsprit um, chalk, which we'll have to make before we can stick this piece in. The next task we have is to make the pillars. So I took out my duplicator. Um, it's from Vega Enterprises Inc. And of course I couldn't find the manual. I probably bought this 15 years ago. So I wrote them a, an email and asked them if they could send me the operations manual. And I got a one-liner, we no longer sell that product. Um, I wrote them back a very rude reply that that was an unacceptable response and haven't heard from them since. And I've cleaned it all up and I've got it functioning. Um, but the truth is, I'm not sure how it would, be, it would fit on the lathe. So I'm going to build the pillars by hand on the lathe. And to do that, I have made a little template on a small piece of wood which I'll use as a measurement guide and then we take it from there. I did try to make up some jigs so that I could get the spacing um, at the bottom and the top in exactly the same spot, um, but they, they didn't work out very well. Um, so back by hand and um, I kept um, the one that I thought was the best and then used that as a visual template um, to try and make each piece as close to the other one as possible. The head of the pillar is five and a half inches, while the heel or the bottom of the pillar is six and a half inches. And I cut these, um, the stock out of eight inch square. So it, it was done on the sander. This has been a, a long day, a lot of patience. Um, I actually only broke one. So now that um, the termite fluid is on, we leave these to dry and tomorrow we look at the bowsprit step. Um, so we'll see you then.